Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to Canvas Hour. And Noah is going to be our presenter today, and he's going to walk us through um, uh, adding files and uh, course settings. Uh, Noah, let, let, why don't you take it away? Great. Uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining today. And uh, thanks for all of you who are watching out there who will be watching this video. Uh, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And let's see here. Okay, can you all see my, my Canvas course? Yes. It says mm -hmm. SPS Canvas Basics. Okay, great. Um, all right. Uh, I will apologize in advance. Uh, there's, a, there's a maintenance crew outside that's um, uh, with leaf blowers and weed whackers and lawnmowers and stuff. So I'll let me know if you can't hear me if I start to get drowned out. Um, all right, so files. Let's talk about files today. Uh, we'll start by going to files inside of our course. And you'll see that here in the course that I'm showing you, we have a bunch of files. Um, they are not well organized. They're just kind of thrown in there. And this is something that if um, you are going to have your files area visible to students, you will definitely want to organize and clean up. Um, it's a best practice to make sure that your files area is organized according to your modules. Okay, but for a lot of us, when we're course building, this is what our files area will look like. Um, now let's, let's uh, I'll give you a, a, a little tour of the files area. We'll just cover the basics so that you're familiar with how it works. It's going to be very similar to the files area in Blackboard. Uh, if we wanna upload a file, we're just gonna go to the red upload button in the upper right corner. I'll click on that. It's gonna bring up my computer and I can go through my computer. I can find a file and select it to upload. So uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and go and I'll choose uh, a PNG. And that is how you upload a file. <laughs> okay. Uh, if I want to create a folder, I would click on the plus folder button, and there it is. There's my folder, and I can go ahead and name this. Um, I might name this after my module, like I know that I have a week one module, so I might put week one here. And down here, I'll see my week one folder. I also see it over here in my file folder structure. How do you get folder? How do you get files into folders? Pretty easy. Uh, one is that I can drag and drop here directly. I can just drag and drop files directly into a folder. I can take this file and I can drag it over here and drop it like that. Pretty simple. Uh, if I want to look at what's in the folder, I can hit my Karen and let's see. Is it going to? Do I have it? Oh, I probably don't have anything in there. No, I do. If I want to see what's in the folder, I'll click on the on the folder name. There it is. There are all of the files, the different files that I have in my different folders. You'll notice by default that there's an uploaded media folder that's going to collect everything that you uh, that you upload, especially if it's um, if it's a media file. And I'm trying to see if I have anything except images in here. And it looks like, no, it's collecting everything. It's collecting all of my image, all of my PNG, JPEG files, all of that. I also have an untitled folder. It looks like there's a doc in there. Um, I have a folder for PowerPoints. Again, when you're organizing your file folder, ask yourself this, are you gonna hide files from your students or are you going to keep the files area visible to students? Okay, this will determine 
the level of organization that you're going to need and want to have in your files area. Okay, any questions? Yeah, I've got two. Okay. Uh, so let's start with the drag and drop business. Uh, can I have the same file in two or three different folders if I'm dragging and dropping like that? You know, that's a great question, Susan. Uh, let's see. We have our, let me see. You know, I might want to have my PowerPoint in my PowerPoint folder and in my module one folder, for instance. Yeah. Well, it looks like, it looks like when you put, you take a, a, a file and you put it into one of these folders, it moves the file into the folder. It doesn't copy it in. Now, let's see if we can, um, over here in this slide four image that I've got. Yeah. I can go and I can click on, I have, yeah. It's, it's just gonna move your file. It will not copy it. Okay, so you gotta pick your one place, huh? Yep, you gotta pick your, you gotta pick your place. Okay, second question, and I think I've got it, but I just want to clarify, because one of my big landmark ideas in Blackboard was with file creation, I always started in the place I wanted it to end up. So if I wanted something to be in module two, I'd start in module two, and I'd upload in that module. Here, it's the other way around, huh? Here, I start in the file place, and I upload, and then I select the place it's going to go. Have I got that right? Uh, no, actually, actually, no, that is a good question. If, okay, so for, for building, building out a module, you do not need to go to files first to upload a file. Okay. If you're in, if you uh, want to, what you can do is you can go directly to modules and let's see here. Let me just show you this because it'll, I can, I can do this. I can, I can show and tell at the same time. So we're going to go here. I'm going to go to my week one module. I will go to files. And if the file isn't already there, I'm just going to simply go and select new file. And then I will click on the browse button here. And I can upload the file into my module. Okay. That file is going to get dumped into either my uploaded media folder or the default folder for documents. Depending. I can do it whichever way is more convenient to me. I can start in the place where I want it to end up or I can start in files. That's correct. Thanks. Yes. I didn't mean to hog the question time. Anybody else got questions? So we got, we'll go back here to files. Um, And let's see, we also, um, we have some, some of the commons there. Um, each, of these, each of these files, you can publish and unpublish just like you can publish and unpublish assignments and quizzes and modules, et cetera. Um, you also have the ability to download some, download a file, which brings us to a great um, a great point that we need to that we need to talk about, which is that when you have your file in your modules area or you have a file on a page, let's say you want to update that file and you don't want to break those course links. What do you do? So one of the things that uh, it's a very good idea to get into the habit of doing inside a canvas is to make sure that you have a standard naming convention that does not include dates, version numbers, or qualifiers like the word final, okay? How many final versions of a document do you have in your course right now? Answer that question privately. It's just between you and the Lord. And there's probably quite a few. So, so when you're naming a file inside a Canvas, keep in mind that you're going to probably be teaching this course again. You're, you're going to want to update a file. You're not going to want to break the links because you won't remember all the places where a link to that file exists inside of your course. So the easy and elegant solution is, let's say I want to update any file. This is my round trip. I'm going to take, uh, it might be a JPEG file or it might be a document, whatever it is, 
let's say for, I have this week one discussion questions and my week one discussion questions, I need to, I need to update that. So I'll go over here and I will download it to my computer. I will go into Word and I will make my edits and save that, save the document and re-upload it. I haven't changed the name of the document. I haven't touched the name of the document because I'm still gonna need my week one discussion questions. From, from now until the sun explodes, I will always need week one discussion questions. So just leave the title of the document alone, edit the document in, in, in whatever application you edit, and then you're going to put this document, you're gonna put the document back in your files folder, okay, as is. And so, it will, up, it will update without breaking those links. Question. Okay, Qu question, yes. So this would lend itself to keeping your files in there as a doc instead of a PDF, right? Because that way you can edit them and keep them in there instead of, and is there a reason for that space or, or speed to save it as a PDF rather than a document? It doesn't make any difference. It really doesn't make any difference if it's a document or a PDF. If you're starting out with a PDF, then make sure that when you re-upload that document into your files area, that you've converted it into a PDF. So some of you will be able to download your PDF. You have Acrobat, you know how to edit PDFs, or, or let's say you're going to recreate that PDF using Word and you're gonna export the Word document as a PDF. That's fine too. Just make sure that the, that the title, that the name of that file is exactly the same, okay? And then that way, when you re-upload it, it replaces the document that's there with the same name and all of the links to that document do not get broken. Does that make sense? So let's, uh, um, let me go here to a couple of summative slides to really drive the point home. <laughs> File naming best practices, avoid dates, version numbers, qualifiers like final. Um, this will ensure that you have shelf life. You won't have to go and change the date or the version or what have you for that file every time you do a course copy. Um, you also won't end up with files that are dated you know, from 10, 15 years ago. Students don't need to know when the document was created, right? Um, and then if it's the same name, it'll maintain the link integrity. Let me talk a little bit about file versus page because this might come up when you're, when you're putting files, you're uploading files into your, uh, into your course, you may be thinking, well, should I create this file as a page inside of a module or something like that? And there are some considerations for that. Um, remember that files can be downloaded by the student and that may be exactly what you want or it may be what you don't want. You can make that, that determination. But if students can download that file, they can reference it later in a course long after they've taken your course, they still have that document. Um, and they can view the downloadable document on their device uh, even if there's no internet or power or water or heat, um, right? So we, we've all been, all been there. Um, linked files can be previewed in a page. So if you put a, you'll notice if you put a file into a page that you get this wonderful little icon, uh, which I can show you on my home page. I think I have one there. So you may not be able to see it, um, unless I really zoom in. But there is a little next to each linked document inside of Canvas. If it's in a page, you'll see this little document icon. You can click on it and it will open the document right then and there. So it's really nice. You know, you can go and I can look at the document that's linked and I can download it as a student. Okay.
And then I can also close it when I'm done looking at it. Uh, let's see, um, files can also be shared between students um, who might, might be taking your course, might not be taking your course. Um, and if you have the information in a page, obviously students who are outside of that course cannot see it. So this is just, these are just little considerations for, for you. And when you're thinking about file versus page, um, I think I have one more slide here. Oh yeah, and, and that is the, what I was talking about at the beginning. Do you wanna make the files area visible to your students? Really, there are two schools of thought here. Um, one, your a lot of institutions really encourage their instructors to hide that and just let it be your own private space where you can upload, organize or not, and you don't have to worry about all of the administrative emails from students saying, hey, where do I find this file? Um, if you do wanna make your files area visible to your students, make sure that just do yourself and them a favor, make sure you organize it. Organize it in a way where they can easily go in. Um, they've Perhaps they've seen the same organization in your modules and they know where to go to find that document. Okay, any questions about files? Any other burning questions about files so far? I'm I'm ready to move on into settings. Are are you are you guys ready to move into settings? Okay, we're going to move into settings. All right. So, course settings. FYI, BTW. Course settings are never visible to your students. Okay, it is the one link that is never visible to your students. You never have to hide settings because it's hidden by default. Only you and TAs can see the settings, the settings panel, okay? Um, so if you have a student that can see your settings panel, you've got a problem because they're in your course as a teacher. So go in to your people tab and change that to suite, okay? Here inside of the settings panel, we've got our course details. Um, the course details will give you some, some um, control over how the course looks. Uh, that is how your course card looks on your dashboard. I've got this wonderful photo here of Hall & Oates. Um, I'm a huge fan of 80s pop, Hall & Oates especially. Something about them, I just, I find it, I find them deliriously good. Um, so here inside of the course name, um, oh, I, I should show you this. I should show you this. Uh, let's see. So when you choose an image for your course, by the way, it should probably have something to do with your course. That Maybe that goes without saying. But when you go to upload, you can upload an image from your computer. And you can also upload from this file, repo this photo repository called Unsplash. Unsplash has, um, if we do a search for, I'll just do a search for a church. Search for church. So it'll bring up all of these images and all of the images are uh, royalty free. Um, um, the, the photographers have uploaded their work and they would like you to use it and you know just credit them if and when possible. Inside of a a password protected environment like Canvas, you don't have to worry so much about 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 you know making sure all your photos are credited. But at any rate, I wanted to make you aware that you can go in and easily choose some some imagery for your course uh, for your course card if you would like to, and you don't have any images of your own. Um, the name of the course. That is going to, uh, I believe that that's something um, that is going to be generated by Banner, um, or it might be the course code. I don't know, Adela, you might, you might, you might have more information on that. Um, yes, it is the course name and the code, and this the, ID are all generated by Banner. Name, name, and code are are generated by Banner. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you don't have to worry about the name and code. 
uh, we won't we won't concern ourselves with that. But what you do have control over are uh, underneath um, the terms. You'll notice that because I'm in a sand, I'm essentially in a sandbox course. So I'm I'm the sandbox course is set to default term, which means it never expires. But your course and banner will definitely be assigned to a, a given academic semester. If you want to override, you'll notice that once once it comes in from Banner, it will have a start and end date already set for it. As the instructor, you can go in and you can change your start and end date if you would like to. And that will override Banner, OK? That will override the terms set forth by Banner. Um, as the course instructor, it's totally up to your discretion whether or not you want to do this. Some instructors will want to. They may want to start early. Some instructors may want to give their students extra time at the end of the semester to go in and retrieve work or finish work or et cetera. So, um, so know that you can do that, OK? Also, here on, um, you've got a number of other really You've, you've got a number of other uh, options that I'll, I, won't, I won't comb through all of them because there are quite a few. But um, next to each of these, like for instance, students can only participate in the course between these dates. You can, there is a little checkbox there. So it isn't just text on a page. And I say that because I can't actually see the text box. I know it's there because I know the design of Canvas, but I can't actually see it. So I'm gonna like, I would have to click around and oh, okay, great, got it. But uh, just know that there is a check box for each of these things, um, or you'll have a drop down, you'll have a drop down menu that you can, where you can go and you can select things. Um, you can change the language of, for those of you teaching languages, you can change the default language for the Canvas interface if you want to, which is actually really cool, I think. Um, then under a lot of these, um, you know, a lot of these are defaults. Um, I, I think in the interest of time, I'm just going to, I'm gonna move through because I wanna make sure that I leave plenty of time for questions. Um, there is an innocent looking more options link at the bottom of this course details page. It almost, it's really easy to miss, but there's some really cool features behind it. Uh, and one of them being that one of them I've activated, which is showing, uh, you can show announcements on your homepage, much like in Blackboard, that was kind of the default. In Canvas, you need to turn it on if you want to have your announce, uh, you know, if you want to have announcements showing at the top of your home page. I caution you from, from getting crazy with this. Like you'll notice here in Canvas that you can designate, I think one is the default or three or something, but you don't want to, you don't want to fill necessarily fill your home page with announcements, but it would, I, it can be really, really useful. The other thing is that you'll have a lot of, of um, modifications that you can turn on here, like letting students attach files to discussion posts, for instance. Well, you'll, you're also going to find you're also going to find um, configurations like that on the actual discussions page itself. But it's here as well. Um, let's see. These I believe these are all going to be global. These are all going to be global configure there are all global rules like if you turn them on it'll be good for the whole, the whole course um okay any questions about course details just one right. quick question one quick question mm -hmm. uh so about the changing the the dates business so i send out routinely an email to my students a week before class i use the email function inside of blackboard they don't need to access the course, but I, I get to them through the course. Do I have to change that date in order to continue doing that? That's a great question. Yeah, so um, once, once you're actually, um, that is a great question. 
I want to say. I think I can answer. Um, they'll, yeah. receive, they'll receive your email, but you'll probably get a lot of, I can't get into the course responses. Yeah. So that just may be like a, a decision on when you reach out, mm -hmm. do the majority of them want to go look at the stuff that they're going to be getting into? And then so just even though I'm not making an assignment or having them directing them to the course, I'm just saying welcome and bring blah, blah to the first day of class. I'm going to open that box, so I might as well change the date, huh? I, I would say 90% of your students will at least just log in and be curious, but not do anything. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, and the, just as a to, to piggyback on that, at the beginning of the semester, um, remember that you will not be able to email your students until you publish your course, which doesn't have to do with the the term dates necessarily but remember that um that you'll need to publish your course and and so uh yeah so there's that um any other any other questions about course details before i start moving across the the tabs here um our next tab is sections and i believe that um uh, I believe that that cross listing is something that we're going to be doing at the admin level, and so I'm not going to tell you too much about sections because um, most most of the cross listing and most of the sections that are going to be combined, I believe, at least for now, we're going to be doing on the backside at the admin level. Um, so I'm going to move on to navigation. Very important tab. This is where you control what the students can see in your course. You want to make sure that um, you want to make sure that you're paring it down as much as you possibly can. Um, I would argue that there are too many ways for students to access content in Canvas. There's just way too many ways. Um, and this will result in students getting lost and getting frustrated and emailing you and in order to cut all of that down, make things simple for yourself and your students. And I would say that anything, any feature or any link inside of your course navigation out of the box, if you don't know what it does, hide it until you do know what it, until you do know what it, what it does. Um, and we are also making an effort to, you'll notice in Blackboard, you may remember in Blackboard that we had a lot of UIW-centric um, resources and things like that that ended up in our course navigation. We're trying to pare that down too and make all of those resources available in one spot in the global navigation that will, the global navigation bar at the far left, okay? So you don't necessarily, you don't have to have those links showing in your course either. Um, so how do you actually, how do you, how do you do this? You can, you can either drag and drop these, these different course links down below uh, where it says drag items here to hide. You can click on the traffic light menu that you'll see throughout Canvas and click on disable and that will also do the same thing. It will also remove the link uh, from, from visibility from students. You and your TAs will always be able to see it, but students will not. Uh, the three, you can't hide the home link, so you don't have to worry about that. I would argue that probably you wanna keep grades and modules visible to students as well for obvious reasons. Modules, because that's where your content's going to be that's where it'll be organized, hopefully. Uh, and grades is, that's obvious too. You know, you, you wanna make sure that you're making your grades available to your students. Um, so outside of home modules and grades, I think that different, it, it just depends on what you're comfortable with. Um, again, anything that you have, any piece of content that you want to make available to students, you can do so through modules. You can create a link to that thing in modules and you'll find out more about modules from Melissa in an upcoming Canvas hours. But, <clears throat> but I would say that, you know, um, 
All the other, there are a lot of other features in Canvas that you can make visible to your students. Again, if you are interested in learning more about those, then you should, and you should learn more about what they do because Canvas has a wonderful feature set that, um, like for instance, a lot of people don't know that Cam there is a thing called Canvas conferences. It is basically a Zoom app that's built into Canvas. It's great for one-on-one -on -one discussions with students or conferences with small groups. When you get into bigger size courses, it gets a little dicey. And I would say use Zoom for, for those, but, um, but it does have that feature. So uh, any questions about the navigation tab while I'm here? When you are done, by the way, and I, I've done this, we've all done it. If you make changes inside your navigation tab and you go to your course and you don't see the changes, it is because you forgot to click the save button at the bottom of the page. So remember that that save button is there, it's in red. It used to be clear colored, it drive me crazy. Um, it's, it's in red now, which is wonderful. And uh, make sure that you hit that if you don't see, if you don't see your changes, you'll just have to go back and redo your work, that's all. Okay. Um, and just, just so you know, you'll notice that there are eyeballs with the line through it of links already in my course navigation that just lets you know that it's hidden from students. Okay, let's move on. Um, we have a couple of other tabs. We have apps and we have featured options. Um, these are both third-party apps that are available in Canvas. Some of these third-party apps, UIW, there's a, there's, a, there's a handful that UIW has a license for, which means that you can activate it in your account. Um, a, a different topic for a different time. Uh, we also have feature options that are here that you can turn on or off and you can learn more about what, what different new feature options might be available for you inside of Canvas. Over here, we have a large, in the, on the right side of our interface, we have a, a bank of buttons, a sizable bank of buttons. And so we've got our share to commons. So you can share your course to commons if you would like to. Uh, if you have colleagues who are in other institutions or you're teaching in another institution and you want to make your course available to yourself so that you can copy it here in UIW, that's great too, that's acceptable. Um, we have uh, course statistics, which will give you some global general statistics about the course, about your file size uh, capacity, how much, how much file capacity you have. I forgot to mention it earlier, but it's 2.1 gigs, I believe, or 2.2 gigs of file space. Um, and I also forgot to mention another thing about files, which is uh, there are two things about files actually. Oh, I wish I wish that we could re-edit this video after I'm done. I would love to sneak it in. Um, maybe I'll maybe I'll have us do that. Maybe we can do that. I can do some magic work. So two things about files that I forgot to mention earlier. One is that you, you want to make sure you put your files in your in your course. Um, some of you may be tempted to link from your OneDrive. Let me let me cast a note of uh, disparagement on that. Um, the, the integration with Microsoft and Canvas is good, but if it goes down for whatever reason, then you don't have your files in your course, okay? So I highly discourage linking files from your OneDrive to Canvas. Just put those files inside of Canvas. Also, if something happens to you and somebody needs to cover for you, teach your course, it's much better if they don't have to worry about having access to your OneDrive. That said, big media files like video do not, I, I should have put, a, I should have created a slide for this. Um, I did my slides last night late, but do not put video files in your files area. Just don't do it, just don't do it. Two reasons. One, they're huge and they'll take up all your file space. But the other is that files don't, uh, video files don't 
behave as expected when you're linking from your files area. You would think that they would, but, but there are streaming platforms and at UIW, we have Microsoft Stream and Microsoft Stream works fairly well for, uh, for serving up video content. And you can embed those videos in, your, in a page inside of your Canvas course and it works beautifully and the videos will work just fine. If you have a YouTube channel, you can do that as well. Um, just make sure that your video files are being hosted on a video streaming service of some kind, a video streaming platform. Your files area is not a video streaming platform. Okay, moving on. Um, I'm sorry that I, 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 normally that's one of the first things out of my mouth when I talk about files and I just completely forgot. Okay. We have a, we've got course calendar. We, you can conclude this course. Um, you can delete the course. You can copy your course. Um, copy this course is, is something that you will definitely be using um, when you begin copying a course from one semester to another. A lot of people prefer the import course content because it allows you to go in and cherry pick what course content you're going to uh, you're going to copy and just for the sake of let's see do we have time do i have time to do this i do i'm going to do this really quick um let's do an import let me just show you what i mean here so if you're cherry picking content let's say you have a blackboard import course your blackboard course has been imported into canvas and you look at it in canvas and you think oh my God, what has happened to my beautiful Blackboard course? It's, it's a disaster. And yeah, it, it might be, it might be a disaster. But the good news is that you can, you can very simply and very easily and in a time efficient manner, recreate that course inside of a sandbox or inside of an empty shell and perhaps in your, in your new Canvas shell. Um, you're gonna do that by going here to copy a Canvas course. You're going to need to be a teacher in the course that you're copying from. We're going to copy, we're going to import content from another course. So I would go in here and I would begin typing and Canvas is kind enough to tell you, oh, you're a teacher in these other courses. So let's see, I might choose, I'll just choose my sandbox. Um, you can also include completed courses, which is nice. So if you have a course that's already passed in Canvas, you can copy content from that as well, if you would like. Then here, very important content. You've got two radio buttons, all content or select specific content. We're gonna spe select specific content. We're gonna click the import button and then don't get thrown by this. Nothing's happened yet, but you'll wanna click on the select content button. That is your magic button. Um, you can go in and now I can go in to my entire course. I can click on any of these arrows. So I can select all assignments if I wanted, all three assignments. I could, I could bring those over or I can bring individual assignments by clicking on the box. Again, I can't see the box, I just know it's there. I'm clicking on it. It's a very little box, very little, hard to see. Um, so, uh, you can go through your modules, every single part of your course, you can go and decide in a, in a very granular fashion, what you would like to copy over, um, including files. Yeah, it's great. So, um, once you're done with that, you can select it. FYI, um, this is kind of a, a nice little tidbit when you're doing a course import or a course copy. Um, if I'm copying content from a previously used course, the content that I bring into my Canvas course, uh, let's say it's I'm bringing in a bunch of files, for instance, I'm copying a bunch of files in from another course that doesn't count against my 2.2 gig um, file allotment size. So it won't it won't count that content twice. It, once it's in a course, you can copy it into multiple courses. It never counts against your course allotment again, which I don't really understand how that works, but I, I kind of just I kind of just consider it coding magic. But that's that's what happens. That's just an FYI. All right. 
Uh, let's see, let's go back. I'm gonna get out of, jump out of import content. And I, uh, you have export course content. You can always export. You can export your entire course as a package. Um, you have this button here called reset course content. This is a very dangerous button. This is the one button that can't be undone. Um, you can delete your course and we can retrieve it. You can, uh, uh, but the reset course content button, if I hit it, it resets the course and gives me an empty shell. All that content is gone. And it's, I have been assured by Canvas or, or by Instructure folks that it is irretrievable. So make sure that you're, <laughs> if you're doing a reset course content, you are 100% sure that that is exactly what you want to do. You want to wipe everything out. You want to start with a blank slate. You're, you're leaving the past behind you and you're not looking back. You are throwing the match on that bridge and you're just not, you're not going to even turn around to feel, to look at the flames. You know, you are really, you're just done. Okay. Um, then there is this really cool link um, that was brought back into my awareness uh, by Melissa Dagny, who is talking about um, make sure that you validate the links of your course. There is this really cool button here called validate links to your content. It will go through and check the links, all of the links in your course to make sure that they're valid. In other words, to make sure that there's something there. There's, it's linking to, um, uh, it's, it's linking to a page, um, a, a, an external URL, a piece of content. So if you have any broken links, they'll be brought to your attention. Really wonderful. In fact, I think I'm going to click it. I'm just going to click it. Um, and we'll just see. I don't know because any questions about, um, about uh, I've just thrown a lot of information at you and we're getting close on time here. We have about 17 minutes left. I know it's doing something because there's a little, you can probably see the little pinwheel, but um, but I'm just curious to, to, I've never done this. I don't think I've ever, I haven't validated links in years. I don't, I don't think. Um, oh. Okay, show links to unpublish. Content found seven broken links. Oh, this is great. Okay, so there you have it. Wonderful, a wonderful tool. It's kind of hidden away in your in your course settings. Um, might be something that you want to do after you've built your course and you're about ready to publish. You're about ready to contact your students, send out that welcome email. This might be a wonderful uh, a wonderful button to push and make sure that. That uh, everything that way it'll you know you figure it'll in the very least it'll save you one email per broken link because you know you're going to hear from at least one student um, if not more so Noah yes um, I also want to say the course link validator you will get notifications from your course Canvas will send them to you telling you that you've got problems. That, and this is what it's referring to. So okay. even if you don't push the button, you might get something that says, you know, students are clicking on an unpublished link. And that, that's kind of what's going on is that it's going to notify you of, of any of those concerns as well. Addie added a, a question in the chat about how to fix these broken links. Ah, that's a great question. Well, OK, so let's see. Um, it's going to tell you, so one of the things that will happen is it's going to tell you if it's an external link or an internal link. All of these are, ex all of these, all are, these external are external links. links. So, um, so we have an external link in this resource. We're unreachable. So what you would need to do is we would need to go to this page and we would need to find what it was, find what it's linking to, it, you know, is it linking to a website? Um, I can't really tell what it's linking to, but, uh, but somebody has put in an external link that's broken. So, um, comment on these, Noah, if you'd like me to. 
Yeah, please do. Please jump in. Yeah. Many years of fixing these types of links. So um, I put in the chat that the short answer is no, you can't fix them here. Um, this is just basically the report telling you what's wrong. And then you'll have to go out to wherever the broken parts are. So unpublished just means that you've not published that piece. So if you uncheck show links to unpublished content immediately, um, that'll get rid of extra you know, problems that aren't really problems. And then you have a second area of problems that aren't really problems. External links that were unreachable is often going to be things students have to log into and can't, can't reach them. So it thinks they're broken. So, yeah. you know, any sort of textbook publisher stuff, um, you know, and other, other various tools that require a you know, firewall or login, that's also going to give you an, a, a broken indicator, but it's not necessarily broken. So just those two things, um, keep those in mind. And, and I, like, I, I know, yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I know, I know that this is that I know by looking at the page that it's a video that's being streamed from, uh, that's been embedded from Microsoft stream, which you also have to log into. Yes. So, and if you time. click the link, it will take you to the place that it's broken where you would, where you would actually go to fix it if it was a problem. So. And if you right click to open in a new tab while you're working, you can keep that list up and then, you know, open up a new tab to go fix the first problem and, you know, kind of toggle back and forth. Yeah. Oh, wow. No, I wonder what video, okay. Oh, this is a video embed page, okay. All right, any questions about about course validator. This is great because we have Melissa here and she has Boku experience with this. Um, <laughs> with with, <laughs> with uh, cleaning up content. So um, you'll get confetti if you don't have any broken ones all over your screen. It like explodes into a celebration. So that's always exciting. And I've only had it happen to me maybe twice in my entire career. <laughs> wow. That's great. Yeah. Something to look forward to, something to strive for. I want the, I want the, the confetti explosion. Um, well, I, if, if there are no other questions, then I think we can, uh, we can go ahead and and sign off for today. Thank you everybody for, for coming and uh, hearing about files and settings. And, um, and we'll see you, we have a, another Canvas Hours for files and settings on the 4th and it's followed by uh, Melissa Dagny. She's gonna, do, um, she's gonna do a Canvas Hours on modules and pages. They kind of all fit together, of course. Um, She's also doing that this afternoon, Noah. She's also doing it this afternoon. Great. So that's, so stick around. Um, a lot of canvas coming at you. Noah, thanks so much. Melissa, thanks for the add-on as well. And I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. Bye-bye. Great. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. everybody. Thank you, Noah. Thanks. Mm -hmm.